The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O you, Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Please remain standing as we invoke the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Ghost, Creator of man. Catherine of Siena. <clears throat> I'd like to focus on her today. You may have heard of her. If you haven't, Google her. <laughs> A very powerful saint in the Middle Ages. A woman in the Middle Ages. This was the time in the Church of the Great Schism which is when the church had three popes all fighting with each other, trying to kill each other for who is the right pope. And the pope had moved out of Rome for political reasons to France, to Avion, France, and comes St. Catherine of Siena. And she had visions of Jesus. I visited her tomb in the year 2018. It was one of the mo most powerful times in my life to visit the tomb of St. Catherine of Siena. We need lots of Catherines of Siena today in the church, in the life of the church, it's always the women, you know. If you look at even our own parish here of Divine Mercy, who runs things around here? It's not me. It's the women, as you know. It's always the women. In families, it's always the woman. Hmm? And St. Catherine of Siena had visions of Jesus and in her visions when she would speak with Jesus, she asked Jesus to drive away the diabolical attacks, the attacks of the devil in her life because the devil had been attacking her. As we know from the Bible, the first letter of Peter tells us that your opponent, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion looking for souls to devour. Is the devil looking to attack you? No, 
The devil is looking to devour you. That's, <clears throat> no. That's what the devil is after in your life. And Catherine experienced those same diabolical attacks from the evil spirits. And Catherine asked Jesus to drive away the demons in her life. And Jesus looks at Catherine of Siena and says, No! You! You yourself, he tells her. You drive those demons away. Catherine said to Jesus, drive away the demons in my life. And Jesus looks at her and says, no, you do it. This reminded me, of course, of, see, if you've read the Bible, you know, it's Luke chapter 4, verse 23. When people are coming to Jesus and they're telling him, you know, help us. We're so sick. We need you to do this or that. Uh, every single day I've got all these people coming and wanting me to drive demons away from them. Uh, and this is what Jesus said. This is what I want to tell everybody today. Jesus looks at the people. Verse 23 of chapter 4 of the Gospel of Luke. And he said, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb. Physician, heal yourself. Physician, heal yourself. In other words, Jesus makes it very clear that the power to drive away evil is within us. You've got that power. Jesus looks at the disciples in today's gospel and says, receive the Holy Spirit. This is extremely important. Not the apostles, but the uh, Disciples. There's a difference between apostles and disciples. You know what the difference is? Apostles are uh, uh, the twelve, and disciples are everybody. That's all of us. So Jesus is looking at all of us and says, Receive the Holy Spirit on the evening of that first day of the week when the doors were locked for fear. Jesus stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. And then he said, to them, the disciples, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. You have received the gift of the Holy Spirit, each and every one of us here. What does that mean? That we are, as the Bible teaches us, temples of the Holy Spirit. Where is the Holy Spirit? Is he floating around somewhere? He's in you! You've got the power in you. In other words, as Jesus said, physician, heal yourself. It's all in you. Hmm? You've got it. Doctors will tell you that 99.9% .9 of people's success, for example, when it comes to overcoming cancer is in their attitude. Whether you believe that you have the power to overcome the cancer. Mm? It's in your attitude. Mm? Doctors also tell us that on average, about every single five days, you can Google this information, on average, about every single five days, we all get cancer. Did you know that? That you get cancer on average, every five days, and you yourself, Expel the cancer through the power that is in you. But we have seen numbers of cancer like we never have. Through what? Through the stress that is all around us, which is the number one tool of the evil one, the devil. Why were the disciples locked behind closed doors, the Bible says today? For fear. For fear. That's the number one tool of the devil. To destroy your life. To fill you with fear that you can't do it. 
That's where you need a reminder like today, Pentecost, that the Holy Spirit is in your life. And that means that the Holy Spirit is in you, that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Don't be looking up. Look in the mirror. That's where the Holy Spirit is. He's in me. In other words, the force be with you. I should be saying that instead of saying the Lord be with you, I should say the force be with you. Huh? Because you've got that force in you, within you, to heal yourself of any ailments that may be afflicting you. Hmm? It's the devil who tells you through fear that you won't do it. Hmm? Catherine of Siena understood this very well. And she got it that the authority to drive away the evil spirits was in her. In other words, people are coming to me day in and day out. I want an exorcism. I want an exorcism. Okay? What does that mean? Exorcism means to drive away the diabolical force. You've got that power in you. It's in you already. What what do the exorcists do? Have you have you I participated in a few exorcisms and what exorcists do is they order the evil spirit to come out. I order you in the name of Jesus. Come out. Hmm? That's exactly what happened in the life of St. Catherine of Siena. Through the authority that was in her, she even had authority over the popes. Read her life. They obeyed her. Jesus said to her, you've got me in you, the spirit in you. And she ordered even the popes to go back to Rome. Hmm? And that same authority is in you today. Mm -hmm. What did the Pharisees say about Jesus? He's not like the rest. Mm -hmm. He speaks with authority. Do you face the evil in your life with authority? For example, no cancer, you don't have power over me. Mm -hmm. No fear, you don't have power over me. No depression, you don't have power over me. No lack of forgiveness in my marriage, you don't have power over me. No. Do you face you know, all your trials and tribulations with that same authority? Who is this that even walks on water? Remember when Peter is walking towards Jesus, he began to drown, the Bible says. When? When he began to doubt. He began to sink. Oh, you of little faith, says Jesus to Peter. You can even walk on water. Why does Jesus tell the apostles that they will be fishers of men. Well, underneath the water in biblical times is where the evil spirits lived. The devils and everything else lived underneath the water. And so Jesus says, you will be fishing people out of the, out of evil. Very powerful if we got if we get this. Now, do you know where the majority of our problems come from? And where do I get all this stuff? Well, remember, I spend my entire day, every day, listening to people's problems. <laughs> so I've got some experience. Where do the majority of people's problems come from? Themselves. From a lack of spiritual force. 
lack of spiritual strength. In recognizing that that spiritual, spiritual, is it? Spiritual, where does that come from? Spirit. We've got Pentecost today, the Holy Spirit. From a lack of recognition of the force that is in you. Everybody comes wanting to talk to me about their problems, but nobody, wanted, nobody wants to talk to me about God. I've yet to have a person come and say to me, Father, I'm talking to you about God, or Jesus, or the Holy Spirit. No, I want to talk to you about my sickness, my this, my that. Who comes wanting to talk about Jesus? I've yet somebody come and say, let's talk about Jesus. Huh? I venture to say most of you, I won't say all of you, but most of you are here right now thinking about your issues. Who's thinking about Jesus? Hmm? Hello? Hello, hello! <laughs> hmm? Who's focusing on the fact that you've got the Holy Spirit in you? You've got the force in you! Hmm? We'd rather focus on the problems, the sufferings, than on Jesus. Notice something that hit me here is that he's not giving this force to the twelve. This is powerful. It's not like there's some elite group that only has the force. He says the disciples. Everybody, that means you. I'm trying what I'm trying to do here right now in this sermon is to tell you you've got all you need because you've got God. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. It's in you. You got all you need in order to make it in this life. Mm -hmm. He didn't just give it to the 12. You know, some people think that it's just, you know, for some elite group, you know, of bishops or priests. No! All of us have it. Each and every one of us. And the devil wants to destroy you. Not attack you, destroy you. But Christ is alive and he is in you. And through him, just like Peter, you can walk on water. Walk over all of those evil things that want to destroy you, like your, your thoughts. Hmm? You are not your thoughts. Your thoughts are not real. Did you know that? You are not your thoughts. When the, de when the devil attacks you that way, through your thinking, which you limit yourself by, you say, no, I won't make it. And then you have to replace it. Oh, no. Oh, this book says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There's nothing impossible for God. You replace those thoughts. The devil attacks you through your past, your mistakes, through your sins. And the devil attacks you through your family members. You know, with family, we just come out well in photos. <laughs> so your, your fears. Hmm? Don't let them. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You've got it all in order to make it. How do these holy things that I prepare for all of you work? Like the oil and the water and all of that stuff. It just activates the force in you. The force is already in you. You just need to activate it. Hmm? That's how it works. So on this Pentecost Sunday, I'd like all of us to think about, you know, whether we believe in God or whether we believe in an all-powerful God. Do I just believe in God or do I believe in the power of God? 
If I believe in the power of God, that means all things are possible. Hmm? And that means I'll be okay. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.